This is part two in a series where I draw a bunch of D&D characters all crammed onto one page. Enjoy! So, you know, if we go into Cinnamon here, and she wears kind of like this minty green shirt. Kind of like something like... Uh, let's get a different brush here. Ooh, something like that, I think. Yeah, just about. Do go in and we color the shirt. And then we go in and she's got you know this maroon, sort of bright, super bright uh, red, orangey kind of hair. Let's exercise a little bit of pride in our work, okay? Try and color within the lines here. I don't know if I would want that specific color. I think I may change it. I might do that a little bit later. Um, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take off the opacity, makes it things a little easier. Um, and so, yeah, then we can just lay down the flats. And flats means literally that. It's the flat color base um, that you add before any shading. And... Yeah, I don't know if I like that. That particular color combination, it's a little bit... I don't know. I'll have to, I'll have to keep working at it. And then, you know, it's just a rad is like a kind of a, a gray, grayish, purplish sort of color. Very desaturated purple. We go in and you know you can just paint in the colors you don't have to worry I suppose you know if you wanted to go even faster you could um, hotkey the uh, the fill um, or or you know maybe not hotkey fill but you could probably take Press G for the paint bucket tool, and then it's like, okay, her pants are tannish color, light tan. So you could go in and do that, but that's gonna, you might have problems like that. Um, and also, you'll probably want to clean up because it doesn't, um, the fill doesn't take so if I turn off this line lines see how it, it doesn't fill underneath it uh, so I don't know do with it what you will um, I usually prefer to just paint it in because it it's not so much of a hassle um, plus I feel like you know it leaves you with a little bit more of an organic feel. I don't know. It's a... Uh, that's, that's just the way that I do it. Let's, uh... Get that going in. I'm just gonna... Real quick. Throw down this color here. There we go. Um... Now, okay, and so her skin is kind of a little bit tanner, but uh, oh man, I'm not liking that red color. We gotta fix that. Let's get the skin in first. Skin in first. She's got kind of a, not quite, not quite to bronze, but not like pale Caucasian either. Kind of like, yeah, yeah, about that color. Well, you know what, we're just gonna, since we're going to be redoing that that red 
repair anyways. We're just gonna not worry about the lines at that point. Let's fix that. So yeah, you're just, at this point, you're just, the uh, color flats is all about making color choices. That's kind of the key at this point. You're choosing the colors that you want to use. Um, and you're not focused. This is, this is probably where um, color theory, and color composition comes into play the most. Because you're not worrying about shading, you're not worrying about lighting just yet. You're, you're, you're making your basic decisions as to what color colors you want to use what color you know color combinations um, it's very important in the character design process if you're designing a character you know uh, get some good co color combinations that make for interesting looking characters and feel um, hmm. I think I'm gonna take this color and uh, I'm gonna hair darker. So I'm just gonna uh, select color range, I'm gonna tap right there, adjust the fuzziness so that we're not selecting the pants, just so we're not selecting the pants. There we go. And then I'm gonna go Control U for hue saturation. I use this pretty much all the time. We're gonna take it darker and a little bit more saturated. Cool. That's kind of, whoop, you. Yeah, no, not quite right there. That's where we want to sit. Now let's fix this, let's fix this hair. Hmm. When, what if we went less orange and more pink? I didn't know that might I don't geez that's hard to say if that'll work out well yeah and it's tough and you gotta make color choices and you gotta figure out color combinations that work well together I mean I like I really like the way that this hair is interacting with the hat I like what it's doing there um, this new pinky sort of color. I don't know if I like it with the skin. Um, I don't know if that's what. Because yeah, Cinnamon is, you know, a really cute pixie character that's bright and happy and joyful and sugar high and, you know, pixie dust and smiles and rainbows and um, all that. So, you know, I think I think that kind of works. Um, this pink hair with this skin color. Um, these tan pants though, well, okay, let's get the boots in. So yeah, a lot of, a lot of doing flats is picking colors, figuring out what plays well together and trying to come up with, you know, something that just has a nice co cohesive feel. And it's not easy, but it, uh, um, if you do it, if you really pay attention to that, then it uh, really helps out your piece and it really does favors for you um, later on. So she's got some dark brown boots. Kind of like that. Maybe not that saturated. Cool. The other thing is a little bit of color theory lesson here is um, more saturation draws the eye. So I don't want the boots very saturated because I don't want to draw the eye towards the boots. I'd rather draw the eye towards her face and that cute little smile she's got. So we're going to desaturate the boots just a little bit and we might saturate the hair even more. <laughs> Mm 
not too blinding levels of saturation. We still want this to be. The other thing is, I really want to make sure that I get the color right specifically for cinnamon because, oh, what am I doing trying to color in the lines? I made a mask for this exact purpose. Davis, boy, what are you doing? Cinnamon's not getting any favors as far as drawing the eye because she's so stinking small in the picture. There's going to be a thousand other things that's going to be wanting to draw the attention, and so she's going to get lost in the mix if we don't make sure that we get a really good color scheme, color draw the eye sort of thing going on. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to take that. I'm going to do same thing as before. Uh, whoop, whoop, color range, select the spot, fuzziness, we're going to want to increase the fuzziness all the way to the point where we're starting to get other colors bleeding in. And so we're going to take that back down, Boop, right there. Okay, and then control U, adjust the hue, we're going to go more saturated, there we go, yeah! That's nice, it's starting to come alive a little bit. There we go, right about there. Coolio. And now I just press Control D to deselect. Just, just hot keys, makes things quicker. Let's throw in the eyes, not exactly perfectly white, slightly gray, just a titch. <laughs> I don't think that's a real word, but just a touch, just a hair hair south of white. The only things that deserve the white um, classification, class, what am I saying? The only things that deserve the color white in the image are things that glow, things that are highlights, like hard, like wet highlights, um, or reflections of light sources. So light sources, reflections of light sources, or highlights of light sources, essentially. You want, uh, you want essentially your histogram, I mean, it can, um, it changes and it varies depending on the scene and the mood, but you want, essentially, um, if you got a histogram, um, bad color, bad brush size too. So if you got, you know, a histogram and it goes from, you know, black, oh geez, black to white, you kind of want, you kind of want it to do that, or or that, or that. But like you don't want a ton of data. You don't want a ton of pixels that are absolute black or absolute white. Um, so that just means that you're crushing information and losing information. And I mean, once again, this is a, that's a rule of thumb. It's not a hard, fast rule. There are obviously exceptions, like there always are, but you know, that's what I try and aim for. All right. Looks pretty horrifying, right? All right, let's turn the lines back on. There we go. And last thing, let's get that tongue in there. Oh, and we gotta do the wings. So tongue, we're gonna go red. No, yeah, let's do pink. We're gonna go red, desaturated, pretty dark, something like around there. Maybe a little bit lighter. Clean junction. And I might adjust the color of these lines just a little bit in the future, but that is going to be another thing. Oh, and the belt. Let's do the belt. You know what? Simplicity's sake, I'm going to use the same color as the boots. I mean, it makes sense. Her skills are in crafting. And this is my character, by the way. Um, so. She would probably craft a belt out of the same leather that she crafted the boots. 
And then a little nice little gold buckle. Oop. Light, not super saturated, because once again, we don't want to bring a lot of attention to it. We still want it to look like it's made out of a goldish substance, but not like a look at me sort of thing. Oh, let's add this little trim. We're going to go blue. We have a cyan, cyan. Now that I'm looking at it more, is it my eyes just deceiving me? Or is that shirt starting to look more blue than green? Huh. It's also important to take lots of breaks to rest your eyes. Um, or else you start, your brain starts playing tricks on you. Yeah, I think that is uh, kind of towards blue, so we're going to shift it. And I'm also going to take it just a little bit darker. Because it's a little on the bright side. A little on the bright side, a little too bright. And these are, you know, very minor differences from A to B, but they can make a big difference in the whole feel of the piece. Yeah, so see now how, once again, we're shifting focus. We're taking the focus closer to the face and less on the shirt now, because the shirt is was way bright and it was like, look at me. But take it a little bit darker and a little bit greener because it was a little too blue. Um, from how her shirt normally is. Um, but now that's a little, it's a little bit, um, just a little bit more pleasing to look at. A little bit more easy on the eyes. And I use that in a strictly platonic sense. Okay. There we go. And I'll, you know, we'll come back in with the lines and color, color in the pupils and the everything like that. Let's get these wings. Um, you know what? I think I'm going to do wings on a separate layer. We're going to do that. I'm going to take the, uh, this purple here. I'm just going to do a little bit darker. I'm just, I'm going straight down. Maybe a little bit more de desaturated. Um, I'm not doing any adding, changing the hue or adding any other, um, saturation or desaturation just making it a little bit darker uh that all that that stuff all comes into play when we start to add actual shading that's just uh there we go okay you know i think i'm what i'm gonna do is i'm gonna go in and we'll hit it back into time lapse and i'll figure out the flats for all of these guys and then yeah, we'll take it back. Sweet, so we got all of that done. 
And uh, a couple things to note, the uh, just the whole process is a lot of fiddling, um, honestly, trying to figure out the colors that work right, that look well and go well together. And sometimes, sometimes it's as easy, like with Grunk over here, it was as easy as, you know, just color, color dropping the colors that, that he provided on his character reference sheet. Um, and other ones, it was harder. Either the person didn't have like a reference sheet or their description, you know, where it was, vague or you know sometimes in the case of our dear boy xanthan here he technically has black teeth but that just would look bad like not to say that black teeth would look bad in a real life scenario but in this picture it would look bad um, and so i ended up having to lighten those up even further from my already lightened starting point yeah so these are the flats and then we're going to work on shading uh, at this point. So let's get into it. So that was part two where we added the flats, which is a surprisingly more difficult process than you'd expect since there's a lot of hard color choices that need to be made. Up next uh, in part three, we've got shading and lighting to do. So stay tuned for that. Mm -hmm. 